Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth video in our series coding the Vision OS wall art app from scratch. And in this video, we'll implement the particles that are part of our final project, which you can see running in the simulator on the right here. So let me show you what we'll work on throughout this video. So when you draw something and you tap done, we have a projectile that's flying from the character to the wall and then exploding onto the canvas. So check it out. We, yeah, that, that, that's essentially what it looks like. So um, let's try to implement that. And to begin, let's head back to Xcode and we can start by looking at our Reality Composer Pro uh, package and in the Reality Composer Pro package that we imported in an earlier video you'll see that there are two uh, scenes there's one called impact particle and main particle so let's open the main particle one and you can see that the main particle has a root entity a particle root child and then it has a projectile uh, particle and a projectile trail and um, if we play that right here you can see what that looks like and um, the material is basically set uh, if you head to the projectile particle um, entity you can go to the particle uh, tab and then you can see that we're setting a particle image here uh, which is referencing the file twinkle.exr which um, you can actually see is part of our materials folder right here and uh, these are the twinkles so that's where it comes from and the other one we're working with the other um, the other scene is the um, impact particle um, and let me just find that real quick. We're working with the main particle right here, and we also have the impact particle. And the impact particle is going to look a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna play this right now, and then we can burst. And when it bursts, it basically will just uh, sort of be of this rectangular shape. So. We have the main particle, which is the trail, the projectile rather, that flies through the air to the canvas. And then once the canvas gets hit, um, will explode out from there. All right, so let's actually make use of these features now and uh, work them into our project. So the first thing we'll do is go to our immersive view. And in our immersive view, I want to create a new entity um, that we create a reference to called projectile. And then what we'll do is go down to our reality view implementation. And I am going to um, add this code in here. Um, and what we're going to say is, let projectile scene entity equal try await entity named main particle. So we're now getting that main particle entity, uh, or rather that, uh, which is that scene uh, that we just looked at in our Reality Composer Pro project. And then once we have that scene, we can find the entity named particle root. So just to remind ourselves, uh, the, if we go to the main particle scene, um, there is this entity called particle root. And so that's what we're referencing right here. And then we are basically setting is emitting to false on both of the particle emitter uh, components of those two children. Um, and the particle emitter component is uh, what is set right here. So in Reality Composer Pro, we're defining a particle emitter. And we're just uh, setting this to false to make sure that it only emits uh, when we want it to emit. 
And lastly, we are assigning um, the projectile to our character entity. All right. Uh, and the last thing we want to do as well is just uh, set our global variable to the projectile that we just defined. So now that we have that uh, implemented, we can head down um, to our uh, switch statement in the view modifier that listens to changes of the view model dot flow state. And as a reminder, uh, the flow state uh, variable kind of uh, is the main driver of global state in our app. So um, based on the change to this state, we know kind of like what part of the flow we are in. And what we want to do is we want to go to um, the case projectile flying, and we're going to replace the break statement here with the following code. We're going to say if let projectile equals self dot projectile. So we just set the projectile. So we should have access to it. And what we need to do is we need to set a destination for the projectile to travel to. And the issue is that the canvas, and we, and we can't set this dynamically, so we have to hard code it for this example. The issue is that the canvas, which we've placed on the wall, is anchored to the wall using an anchor entity. And an anchor entity um, does not give the, give the user us access to the actual transform from the user's origin. Uh, and the reason is that Apple wants to maintain user privacy in certain instances, particular when using the anchor entity, so that you don't know uh, and can't infer, I guess, a certain information about the user's environment. So um, we're just basically hard coding this um, to travel to the center of the screen. And then what we're doing is we're calling um, this task closure. And inside of it, we are set creating a duration of three seconds. And we are calling projectile.position um, and setting a position. And then we are setting is emitting to true on the children of that particle root. And we are moving the particle from our current uh, origin, I guess, or from the character entity rather, to the destination. And then we sleep for three seconds and then we are going to set is emitting to false and we will update the flow state and call update wall art. All right, so now what we're doing is um, just, uh, yeah, uh, implementing the flying of the particles from the character to the canvas. And we're not actually setting the projectile flying state yet. So in order to do that, we can head to the doodle view. And instead of saying view model dot flow state is equal to update wall art, we want to first set it to projectile flying. And then once the projectile flying state concludes, we will call update wall art. So we're changing the sequencing of this right now. And so let's run that and see what happens. Um, let's go through the flow. And nice, so we can see that we now have the projectile flying from the character to the center of the screen, which is where the canvas is at, and the wall art updates as we expect. All right, nice. So let's move on now to implementing the bursting of the projectile as it makes impact with the wall. And to do that, let us create a particle system. And so um, 
We'll start by creating a new file and I'm gonna just make it a generic Swift file and we will call this impact particle system. And the first thing I'm going to do is define a new component and it is a projectile component and it inherits from component and conforms to codable and it has two properties the first one is bursted and the second one is can burst and what they represent is the following bursted basically represents if the particle has made impact with the wall and has subsequently bursted and can burst basically just manages state to 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 tell the component whether it is in a position in which it should or can burst and the time when it can burst is essentially as it makes impact with a wall and so while it's sort of like midair um, it can't burst and sort of that's what this property will manage Alongside this component, we're going to implement a system and we'll use the reality kit system. Um, and inside of our impact particle system, we will create a two, we'll create two entity queries. The first one is for the projectile component and the second one is for the particle emitter component. And um, then we'll just initialize it and we'll leave that one empty and then we will just create a uh, empty update function for now and we'll add code to here in just a bit um, but up this update function gets called on every frame and so here we'll be able to update any state um, as sort of uh, we move through the experience. All right, now, we actually haven't implemented the impact particle yet. Uh, so let's head back to the immersive view. And just like we did for the main particle earlier uh, that represents the projectile, let's now go here and import and sort of add the impact particle to our reality view as well. And um, what we're doing is calling impact particle scene entity is equal to try await entity named impact particle in reality kit content bundle. And so we're getting the impact particle scene and then we are getting the impact particle inside of that scene. And so just as a reminder, we can go to the impact particle um, scene and inside of here, there is a entity called impact particle. And so that's what we're referencing uh, right here. Then we're setting a position and we are setting a burst count of 500 and we are setting the emitter shape size which is the same size as our canvas on the wall and then we are calling plain entity dot uh, uh, impact particle so we're adding the impact particle to our plain entity because we want the particle to basically appear um, on our canvas and once that is done, um, we can go back to our system to actually implement that now, given that we've added the particle to the content of our reality view. And so let us go into our update function right now, and we can do the following. We can say var iter is equal to context that entities matching self dot projectile query um, when dot rendering and we'll make an iterator out of it and so then we can iterate over our projectile um, entity 
um, and we will get the projectile and a, the projectile component. And then we can basically on every frame do the following. We'll see uh, if the projectile component has bursted and we're going to see if it can burst. And sort of if it hasn't bursted and it can burst, then we want to burst. And so in order to do that, we are going to iterate through the context uh, and well, we'll grab the context and we'll iterate through the entities and we'll search for um, all our uh, particles and or rather the, 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 the particle components. And of all the particle components, we want to see if the name is equal to impact particle. And if it is, then we call burst on that component. And so once we have called burst, we will set burst it is equal to true, which means that on the next uh, call of the update function, we will no longer burst. Um, and lastly, we'll just set the projectile components um, at the projectile component itself to the projectile component. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to do a couple more things in order to actually have this run. We can head back to our immersive view and the one thing we need to do is we actually need to set our projectile component on the um, projectile. So we can just go back up here and just below before we add it to the ch as a child to the character entity, I'm just going to say, projectile.components set projectile component. And um, the other thing we need to do is go to the wall art abstract and we need to create a initializer. Um, and I'm actually going to remove that. We're just gonna make that an empty initializer. And we can then register our system, our impact particle system, and register our component, which is our projectile component. And lastly, what we need to do is go to the immersive view, and we need to go to our case in the view modifier on change. And in the case update wall art, um, we also need to set our projectile um, our projectile com well our projectile has the projectile component and so we need to set that state variable can burst to true to t like tell uh, the system that it can now burst and so if we run this what we should expect is everything to work um, the way we saw it in the final in the final project. So I am going to go through the motions here, and we're going to draw. And now we see the particle flying to the wall, making impact and sort of uh, yeah bursting onto the canvas. So that's it. That's uh, how we implement these particles in the wall art app that we've been working on. And um, that really concludes this project. And I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you kind of want to see next. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.